Ukrainian officials have announced that the Hirska district in the Luhansk region is now fully occupied by Russian forces who are penetrating deeper and deeper into the area around the key city of Lysychansk. The governor of Luhansk has confirmed local forces have been given an order to retreat from the twin city of Severodonetsk. He says the fighting in the east is entering what he calls a fearsome climax. Washington has confirmed that four longer-range HIMARS rocket systems have now been delivered to Ukraine. It's unclear if they've been used yet or whether they can turn the tide of the battles in the east. There, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk are being reduced to rubble by Russian airstrikes and artillery shelling. Let's go to the capital, Kiev, and speak to Ali Mustafa. Ali, we've been expecting this. British intelligence was saying a few weeks ago that it would be a matter of days before Severodonetsk fell to the Russians. But it seems to be happening. It's a question of whether there can be any sort of counterattack from Ukraine. No chance, Adnan, especially given the fact that uh, the Russians are heavily shelling Lysychansk, this which was meant to be the staging area of sorts for Ukrainian forces to launch any possible counterattacks on Russian positions in Sverdonetsk. And it's only a matter of time, it seems, if uh, the Russians continue on this uh, trajectory, which it seems very likely that they will. What happens next once that phase uh, is complete or that objective is complete for the Russians, that'll be something which will be interesting to watch, Adnan. Uh, we've been concentrating a lot on what's been happening in Brussels. It's the second day of an EU summit. I don't suppose that for Ukraine itself right now, this official formalization of its candidacy to become a member of the bloc is really going to change anything at all, is it? You know, in times of war, um, even uh, something symbolic, as symbolic as being granted uh, candidate status in the European Union, can go a long way in motivating people. Uh, the war is a reality. Even here in Kiev, it might seem normal. Some people on the streets, but every other person that you speak to. I met a friend a few days ago who works at uh, uh, the Ukrainian state broadcaster UA, and he was telling me that there's pressures on us, there's mood swings, people are so distraught that anything, any sign that uh, of acceptance, of support goes a long way in this country, especially when 20 to 25 percent of this country is now um, in the hands of or under the orbit of Russian forces. And if this continues, even more land might go. So the fact that Europe is giving the Ukrainians, um, if, if a symbolic, but at least a seat at the table to eventually become a member of its union, then this is something that the Ukrainians will take. But they need, they say they need weapons. You were mentioning the HIMARS or the HIMARS systems. They're arriving here. They say they need more of those. And you might be seeing or entering a phase where either side is now consolidating its positions, regrouping the Russians, maybe getting more forces from the east after they take that chunk of Severodonetsk, and the Ukrainians then regrouping and basically um, reassessing their inventory, how much weapons do they have, how many men do they have, fighting men, um, and all of these things will then come to an head into what will eventually be uh, the, the third phase of this conflict. Ali Mustafa in Kiev for us. Thank you, Ali.